Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video here, an expanded deck. This is going to be Feromosa GX, and to just begin on the deck profile here, we have one copy of Oranguru, and we have one copy of Talonflame. Talonflame will allow us to use him if he's in our opening hand as a stage two, as a basic, and he has a free retreat cost. Arrow Blitz, 40 damage, and you can find any two cards in your deck, put them in your hand, shuffle your deck afterwards. So what this will allow you to do is if you don't have things such as the Beast Energy or the Choice Band, you can go ahead and you can grab those. Or if you happen to have those pieces already in your hand when you're setting up, you can go ahead and grab like maybe two Max Elixirs or something along those lines. Max Elixir Stadium. Uh, Whatever you may need, maybe you don't have enough on the bench since we run a very low count of basic Pokemon. You can go ahead and grab a Nest Ball or something like that. Uh, the only the only difficult thing there is if the opponent decides to play N, you got to go ahead and go do the same thing over again. But because you get the free retreat and Pheromosis sets up very quickly just to energy, you should be able to get set up very quickly and utilize the Talent Flame as potential 130 HP free retreat attacker with a resistance to fighting, which is also uh, pretty beneficial now. Uh, the next thing is that we have this Pheromosa that came out in Forbidden Light. It is Ultra Beast as well, so it can also take advantage of the Beast Energy. High Jump Kick does 20 damage. Add the damage modifiers such as the Beast Energy Choice Band. You start doing a little bit amount of damage, but it's pretty, uh, pretty critical here that this White Ray can do 90 damage and will double in damage up to 180 when there's only one prize card remaining. So if you happen to be playing some single attackers, uh, decks as your opponent this can utilize be utilized late in the game to really uh, swing a matchup that you didn't expect to win because your three Feromosa are already gone at that point now Feromosa does have only 170 HP but the interesting thing about this card here is that fast raid allows you to attack on your first turn so you could potentially get a donk on an opponent if you happen to get the beast energy and you're doing 60 and then you can grab the Fighting Fury Belt and you would be doing 70 if you happen to open up with all of those components there. That would be pretty nice because uh, something like a Lucario would be able to, you know, that would just be eliminated. Uh, Gibble, that's another one that would go down if you're playing against a uh, Garchomp, some, some along those lines. Even the uh, Zerua, you can knock out a Zerua on your first turn, which is also very nice. And on your second attack, Cruel Spike, 60 damage, it does confuse the opponent. The GX attack is a little bit lacking. I think we'd like to possibly look at trying to find another attacker who could utilize the Beast Energy and also has a strong GX attack. Uh, but this could actually be used late in the game if you're getting far behind and say your opponent's taken three prize cards already and you haven't taken any. This can actually allow you to just get uh, one shot on your opponent to get you caught back up in the game. And that could happen because uh, Beast Ring would allow you to instantly accelerate energy when they're on that three or four prize card turn. So you do have a little bit of a swing mechanism there with that GX attack. I run two copies of Enhanced Hammer in this deck. I found that this was really helpful against anything uh, that would be like Lycanroc that has very, uh, DCE oriented attacks such as uh, Zorark as well. I run three copies of Field Blur. The reason for three copies in this list is because the 170 HP is very low. We really don't want our opponent to get things such as the Fighting Fury Belts and the Choice Bands because if they've got the Fighting Fury Belts, then they've got way too much HP for us to continue to stay even in the prize trade. And we don't want them with the Choice Band being able to swing so hard into Feromosa because Feromosa is a little bit fragile. now. We do have four copies of Max Elixir, which is obviously pretty self-explanatory to accelerate the energy in the deck. Four copies of Nest Ball, because we run nothing but basics. I put in one random receiver. This kind of helps in certain situations where we don't have a supporter in our hand, and we want to get out of whatever situation that we're in. I added in Repel, because this does help when you are on those first uh, turns where you are getting to attack first. They may put something up, that you don't want to swing into on that first turn and you'd rather swing into the one that they have on their bench say maybe it's a Ralts or something like that on the bench so repel would allow them uh, well forces them to switch to one of their bench pokemon and put it in the active uh, rescue stretcher just to get back some uh, pheromosis 
Super Rod can also do that same thing, but helps recycle the energy. That way your B string will stay active. Uh, you don't want a dead B string because then it's just a dead card in the deck. We have three copies of Aether Paradise. This will allow you to take 30 less damage from attacks. So Pheromos' HP can technically be bumped up to 200 when the stadium is in play, which is also nice. And then you add in the Acerola, which can help you because it's such a uh, fast t uh, attacking single energy or double energy attacker with Max Elixir. Uh, you could do some sort of Acerola juggles there with the Pheromos uh, to prevent you getting knocked out so easily. Three copies of Cynthia and one copy of Gardenia. I found that this can help as well because you may be able to have things very set up in the early game and they swung into you. They just did a little bit of chip damage here and there for a couple of turns. And if your hand is set up pretty well, your board state's pretty nice, you can just go ahead and play Gardenia. We got two copies of Guzma and then two copies of N. The reason two copies of N, I may want to try and find a way to make it up to three copies of N is because you will most likely take a couple of mulligans uh, your opponent will have quite a few cards in their opening hand, which is not very beneficial to you when you're setting up. Also, the Kukui on the first turn, that's another way to up that damage. So if you do happen to get the Beast Energy, now you're doing 60 on the fast raid, and you get the Fighting Fury Belt, 70, Kukui, 80, 90. So that's another tactic that you're able to pull off and you may be able to find it off of that random receiver one copy of sycamore don't really need any more copies of sycamore just because the deck uses a lot of items and once all those items are thinned out from the deck you really only have the guts left like the stadiums the max elixir so you don't really want a sycamore too many resources away a three copies of choice band really need three copies just because feramosa just does not swing that hard with the cruel spike attack and then we've got two copies of Fighting Fury Belt. So when you add the Fighting Fury Belt, you add the 10 damage on your attacks, but you also get the 40 HP. So you can go up to 210 with the Fighting Fury Belt. You couple that with the Aether Paradise Conservation Area, and now you're up at 240. That's pretty difficult unless your opponent does happen to play a lot of Field Blowers. Two copies of Float Stone. This was really just to help out with not having to get stuck with a Oren Guru up because you will never really want to attack with this. And then one copy of Beast Energy and then 10 copies of Grass Energy just to ensure that we're going to always get a high percentage of a chance to hit on our Max Elixir. And that's pretty much how the deck runs. It is very trainer heavy. So uh, Trash Alanche, your worst nightmare, if you see that matchup, you just know that you're gonna have a bad day. But anyways, that's the deck profile. Let's get into some matches. Okay, on this first match, we're going up against a Garchomp deck here. It looks like they're running a Garchomp with uh, Mag Cargo with the smooth over ability. You see, we've already set up here. I kind of skipped forward in the match a little bit. I've already got two energy set up on the Baby Pheromos with the Choice Ban. I've already taken a prize off of killing a Baby uh, Gibble there. And he went for the Quick Dive onto the Pheromos. And now the Aether Paradise even works when they're on the bench there. So instead of it doing 50 damage to us, it actually only did 20 damage. And this point, I'm going to go ahead and confuse him. So his only option there is to retreat back into the Mag Cargo unless he gets something off of his top deck or some sort of draw supporter to get a bench Pokemon. He goes ahead and he goes retreats into the Mag Cargo. Maybe he's going to do a smooth over play, try and get out of the situation that he's in at this point. We don't have a very good hand at this point either, but our opponent doesn't really understand that and doesn't really know. They don't have any option or any information to know about what we have in our hand. I just tried to thin my, my hand out a little bit by putting that choice ban onto the Oranguru just to sort of get it out of my hand. It's a dead card at this point. We do actually top deck the Cynthia, which is very nice. Put the other energy there onto the Baby Pheromos. We can always swing into that Garchomp just in case they're able to do something and knock out our Pheromosa. They would have to get a field blower though because their uh, their uh, attacks aren't actually even going to be enough even with a choice ban. So instead of 
instead of making that a possibility, I just go ahead and I retreat into the baby pheromosa and knock it out. That way I say, hey, you want to knock out something, you're only going to be able to knock out this baby pheromosa. Unless you top deck a Guzma, you top deck a Guzma, you're gonna you're gonna cut yourself short because you're not gonna get any draws. Your smooth over is gone at this point. What other options do you really have left? Let's see if you can stick it out in this match. So he does get a draw supporter for his turn. He does get a gibble down on the bench. He attaches an energy there. He played the Cynthia, so he is able to hit for. 170 damage there. So I just bring up the Pheromosa GX here. I top deck another baby Pheromosa. I get a max elixir off of this Kukui. With the Kukui, I should have enough for the knockout here. And there's a knockout on the Garchomp. So it'll be hard pressed to see if our opponent's able to get all the pieces they need to get another Garchomp in play. So they do get the Gabite up. They get a Lucario down on the bench. They're still coming at us. They are still being resilient and they are not giving up in this match. They do have a Guzma. They Guzma up the Oranguru. Interesting, okay. I think we can get out of this by just playing the field blower onto the onto the Oranguru to get rid of the choice band, putting on the float stone. I don't really even want to swing into the Gabite at this point because I don't have a knockout on it. So I'd rather knock out this uh this Riolu before it become can become a Lucario, because I don't want them to be able to get access to the ability of the Lucario. I'm attach a grass onto our bench, retreat. And we're gonna knock out with the cruel spike. So we've only got two prizes left. Our opponent is getting far behind in this match at this point. So even if they were gonna be able to take a couple of prizes here, that's just gonna enable our GX move to do some more damage. And it would put us into beast ring territory as well. We got the Cynthia in our hand. Our opponent shows us a sad face. He says, well played. He doesn't hit any. Uh, he doesn't hit the Garchomp, doesn't hit DCE or something I'm imagining. Oh, he has no more Garchomp in his deck. So we put, a, we put a lot of pressure on him really early. We got rid of a lot of resources. He really wouldn't have any option to really catch up with us at that point. So that was that match there. And then we're quickly moving on here to the next match. Opening hand. We do take a mulligan. We've got Firamosa GX as well as the Oranguru in our hand. So two mulligans there, which isn't terrible. We're only running seven basic Pokemon. Now we are going first. We have technically three draw supporters in our hand. This is an old deck that I haven't seen in a while that utilizes Chorus Machine and Plasma Energy. So because we're going first, I want to do the Kakui. Just capitalize on getting a lot of damage off for just one energy. So we do 80 damage on our first turn. That's pretty impressive for just a single energy and on our first turn. So we get a nest ball. Obviously going to play the nest ball. I've already got the baby pheromosa so we'll go ahead and get another gx off of that nest ball and it's going to go ahead and play cynthia here i'm going to thin my deck here play another nest ball get the other pheromosa gx out i actually play repel here I 
Not sure if it's the best tactic to actually do at this point. Because we could have gotten a knockout there on that other Thunderous. He's just going to hard retreat here back into that one. And that's fine because we, we will be able to knock it out next turn. Well, we were going to be able to. They dropped down the rough seas and they're able to heal up some of the damage there. So that is a misplay on my part. They call us machine to get a plasma energy onto the Lugia. The Lugia is able to take an extra prize when they do get a knockout. So it is unfortunate because of that little mishap, that little misplay that we had there. Now the option here is either to Cynthia to try and find some Max, Elix uh, Max Elixir's Beast Ring, or not Beast Ring, but uh, Beast Energy, other valuable items such as that, or to just Cynthia. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up my bench here because we don't play any Tapu Lele, and that also gives us the ability to draw one off of this Instruct. And now we have two different draw supporters for next turn. I'm going to go ahead and do the Cruel Spike so it confuses them. It's giving them potentially a chance to retreat into the Lugia if they're able to get energy on it. I believe it still needs two more energy. So maybe they can get another Plasma Energy in the discard, Colorus Machine, and attach for hand onto the Lugia. We'll see here. There's the Colorus Machine. So they've almost got it all the way set up. They just need to attach manually. And there they go. They will get a knockout here on it, and they're going to take three prizes. So that's... That's upsetting because we misplayed early in the game. Well, that's all right. We have lots of catch-up mechanisms. We have the beast energy. We have the beast ring as well. We got a rescue stretcher. We want to get that back right away. We'll get value out of this uh, stretcher before we have to lose it out of our hand. And it's obviously best approach here is to N after we instruct for one. Because our opponent has what eight cards in their hand, and there we see a max elixir off of that instruct for one. So that's really nice. All right, that's nice, that's nice. So let's see what happens when we play this end down. Okay, we get to bump the stadium, that's nice as well. Yeah, another max elixir here, and we fail on this max elixir, which is fine. We're set up pretty well at this point. Might as well drop this float stone down onto our Oranguru. We'll just go ahead and Beauty GX. Now my, my calculations were a little bit off and I thought I was going to be able to get a knockout there, but we don't get the knockout. Starting to load up that Zapdos there and they play Volkner, which is a nice, nice addition for this older expanded deck. They're going with Thunderous to do some energy acceleration here. They've got a lot of damage out on the board at this point. So we can sort of see where, hey, we've got two prizes here on the Lugia. We've got two prizes over there just waiting to be taken on the Thunderous. The only thing we have left to do is just go ahead and play. Use play. Just looking over the attacks of some of these Pokemon before I decide who we're going to use this Guzma on. Might as well get this out of the way because if it is able to get powered up again, it would be able to 
win the game for them, which is scary. So you definitely want to get that threat off the map. The other things that they have on the bench, the Thunderous, it doesn't really scare me doing such a little amount of damage. I actually feel blower away my own float stone just to try and get another pull here. And I do top deck a choice band, which is nice. So we'll get a knockout here. And two grass energy, that does help. So we'll be able to get our other Pheromosa GX powered up. They play Steven, which is sort of like an old school Volkner, except for they get a supporter and an energy. They grab Volkner and Lightning Energy. And I know that they're going to eventually get that Dual Brains Magna Zone up and be able to play two supporters per turn, which is a little bit scary. It's surprising that they haven't been able to get it powered up at this point yet. So here we're going to clean up the damage that we had put onto the Thunderous. So we're trying to make up for our misplays from earlier and we're finally ahead in this match. We get the Enhance Hammer. That's going to help us get rid of that Plasma Energy off of this Zapdos. And they play Volkner that they got off of that Steven last turn. They grab Ultra Ball and Lightning Energy. So imagine here they're going to be able to get that Dual Brain Magna Zone up. Just checking out this Rotom. I have not seen this card. Okay. There it is. And then they Rare Candy into him. Let's take a look here at how many, ener uh, how many energy in my discard, things of that nature. So we get to play the E-Hammer, get rid of the Plasma Energy. And we're going to start powering up at this point the Baby Pheromosa. And it probably would have been better to put the Fighting Fury Belt onto the Pheromosa. Maybe not. Uh, it's sort of a... a a judgment call there for preference, really. And then we'll go ahead and do Cruel Spike, which confuses them. So if they do have an energy in their hand, even if they were able to play the two supporters that they could possibly play with the Dual Brains Magna Zone being in play, still doesn't guarantee that they're going to be able to swing through unless they go ahead and they retreat into the Thunder. So they retreat. I still don't think they're going to be able to do enough damage to stay in this game. Get the Zapdos powered back up. And then they just, they concede at that point. So I think they knew that they were a little bit out of the match at that point. And maybe they had a dead hand at that point. They only had one card left in their hand. And they knew we were probably going to be able to scoop up another knockout there pretty easily. On to this next match here. I see a fighting deck box, so this will be this will be a pretty good matchup because the fighting is pretty pretty strong with all the damage modifiers that they have. Luckily, on our end, we have a few da damage modifiers as well. We also have some damage reducing mechanisms such as the, the stadium and the fighting fury belt. So we have a mulligan here on our opening hand. We're starting with the Baby Pheromosa here. Okay, they did mulligan a couple times. Luckily for us, they're opening with the Zygarde EX, and that is weak to grass. The Zygarde EX used to be the solid opener before Buzzwool became so prevalent. 
for fighting decks. But even still, it was still making lists just to prevent bad matchups where they're going against Psychic Malamar. So the Karina, they grab an item, they grab energy. They're putting down a Lucario EX there on the bench and Max Elixir hits for that. So we'll be able to hit the Lucario. I'm not sure if they're playing a Mega Lucario, but they do get two Max Elixirs a hit. That is nice for them. So just looking at our hand here, we definitely know we're going to have to Nest Ball. We're going to have to attach an energy there to our Pheromosa GX is what we're going to have to grab. And we hit a Max Elixir as well off of the top of the deck. So we could potentially do a lot of damage here on our first turn if the Max Elixir is able to hit. And the Max Elixir does hit. Awesome. So then we're going to go ahead and play N. If we get a Choice Bin or something, it would be nice. Okay, this is not what I want to see in my in my hand here at this point. We're going to have to probably go with uh, Orin Guru here just to possibly get us out of the situation. The E-Hammers could possibly both be used if they play some strong energy, something along those lines. So drop a tool. Uh, I know we'll be able to get rid of the Fighting Fury Belt. Probably should have played the blower. I was just being a little bit conservative trying to get max value out of it in case they drop a field blower onto the Zygarde X. We see the Diancy Prism come down and that's got weakness as well to us so that's something that we could also uh, possibly snipe off if needed. The VS Seeker which means they're going to play Karina again. Grabbing Riolu and a switch. That's a nice. It's a nice two things to grab there. So that means they're gonna get out of us getting some easy prizes, and they're gonna go into the Lucario and hit us for a hundred and ten. Actually, no, they've got Diancy, so it's gonna be a hundred and thirty. So that hurts. Get rid of their Fighting Fury Belt. We don't want to deal with that. We might as well get this powered up because that can help take out some things later in the game. Especially with the Zygarde being weak, it does make sense to go ahead and put an energy at least onto that Pheromosa. I'm going to put the Choice Band down. I'm going to go ahead and just thin our hand and get some pulls here with the Orin Guru. Obviously grab another GX here. We're just going to drop all of our tools here at this point. We're going to potentially put that... Um, we potentially put that choice ban onto the baby Pheromosa, but I think it'll be okay. We could even force them into... into having to pull up one of their bench because they, they probably would have brought up the Riolu. We wouldn't have gotten the knockout there, at least at this point. If they don't play a Mega, they've got a coin flip as to whether they're going to be able to attack. Well, actually, they they get a Pseudo Wudo and another Switch card. I'm surprised that their list plays Switches. They actually switch into the Riolu. They know that they're safe there at that point. I'm imagining that this is going to be the GX Lucario. So now they're going to get a knockout here. It is disappointing because we kind of have our back against the wall now. Uh, the best tactic here is going to be go ahead and bring up the Free Retreater. And we know that we can force the Repel at this point because we really don't want to swing into the Lucario GX because that's, that's their play. That's how their deck is sort of constructed to make us not be able to one-shot the Lucario GX. And then they can go ahead and use the GX attack. 
to just swing right back at us with a ridiculous amount of damage. I don't want to do the Kukui here. It's going to lose. It doesn't give me a lot of value. We do hit a beast ring here, which is real nice. We're going to go ahead and beast ring onto the Fairmost with the Choice Band. Drop some more tools here. We're going to retreat into our full art one that is fully powered up, and we'll get a knockout here. We're tying things up at this point. They don't really have anything threatening here on this next turn because it will take two more energy for that Lucario to be very effective and I don't see them wanting to throw up the Zygarde at this point. All we really need is a Guzma. We'll be in a nice spot here to be able to get rid of that Zygarde. Now this is a little bit concerning because they bring up the baby Buzzwool and they attach the Fighting Fairy Belt. So they're going to be swinging for what, 120, 130, 140, 150 with all the damage modifiers. This is where the Acerola comes in very clutch because we could just scoop up our damage one, bring up our fresh one. They actually decide to go with the one with the Fighting Fury Belt and I I don't necessarily think that's a good play, but I guess for what for what they had in their hand, they couldn't do anything with the Lucario. I don't see why they wouldn't just let him take some damage though. I don't know if we need to rescue Stretcher, but I'm thinking we can get it out of out of our deck at this point. We go ahead and I guess at this point it's okay. Oh, Okay to lose this tool. I don't really want to get it another float stone back. I just feel like it's kind of clunking up the deck. So we'll try a max elixir here. I'm not too confident about max elixir here. So we'll just wait. Okay, so we've got manual energy attachment in our hand as well as B string, so We'll have to play a beast ring first and see how much energy is actually in the deck. I'm just deciding where to split our energy at this point. Thinking about putting it on this baby Feramosa here. I think the reason I'm having such a difficult time here to make this decision is because I haven't seen Guzmas. And that is rough. So we know we have some energy prize because we're only showing what, about six seven energy that we've seen so far maybe eight so we know we're missing two energy we need to hit into a super rod here and i like this idea of just just tapping into this this baby buzzball at this point rather than bringing up a gx Ferramosa to get damaged they slapped down another energy on their Lucario GX, so they're starting to get some more threats available to them with this Buzzball still being active. This is going to be... This is going to be an interesting play at this point because they, they are ahead in the match at this point. We knock out only a single prize attacker, which I don't like. But we even up the prize trade at this point. You know that they're going to bring up the GX. You know they're going to swing into us and it's going to be doing 150 damage. They hit a wishful baton. but they didn't get an energy. So we got saved there by them missing that energy attachment. That may have just been their demise by not having that attachment for a turn that we can actually swing this match up here. I'm wondering if the game is glitching up. That's 
very, very odd that it kept the damage count on that Pheromosa. Even when I put it back on the bench, it was still showing damage. It wasn't until I played the Fighting Fury Belt that it removed it. Definitely made me nervous. I didn't like that. So we definitely want to attack them because even if they do want to do their GX and potentially knock us out, it's still a 50-50 unless they hard retreat into something. Don't think they would want to hard retreat. It seems like they're having energy problems. They want to play Field Blower, but we've got, what, five tools out? So their Field Blower isn't going to be that highly effective. Obviously, you got to get rid of the Stadium. You just got to get rid of that Stadium. That Stadium's going to be a pain for them to deal with. So they're going to want to get this other Lucario up at this point. They actually don't run any strong energy. I feel that the list should be running choice bands and strong energy. And they actually don't get their attack to go through. So we are going to be able to knock this out, especially with the Kukui. Should be 110 damage with the Kukui if I did my math right. So even before we Kukui'd, we would have had the knockout. But still, I don't think that they're necessarily out of the match, especially because they had that Wishful Baton. And they got to keep those energy in play. And if they're able to bump our stadium, they might just be able to get a knockout here. 100 plus 30 choice band. Ooh, this hurts that they're, that they're playing the end because we had the Guzman hand for the game. Um, yeah, 100 plus 150. Yeah, they could potentially knock us out as long as they hit into a choice band. Oh, I forgot about the stadium, actually. No, they wouldn't have been able to. They would have had to bump the stadium with the Brooklyn Hill as well. So you see where all these tools become so valuable, especially that stadium. This is going to be a little bit of overkill putting on the beast energy. And a smart play here was saving this GX. So what we're going to be able to do, we're actually going to be able to GX. It'll do 150 damage based off of just how many prizes that they've taken. Plus 30 for the choice ban. Plus another 30 for the beast energy doing 210 damage on that GX. So that was it right there. And if you guys appreciate this video, you guys want to find the list, you want to come join the Discord, you want to get in on some of the some of the communication that we have about some of these decks that I'm making, these video profiles. If you like the video, go ahead and leave a like. Please leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on the video. And you guys have a great day. Please subscribe. I'd appreciate 